My name is Esme Bakker and I'm a PhD student of the Radboud University Medical Center in the Netherlands and the Research Institute for Sports and Exercise Sciences at the Liverpool John Moores University in the United Kingdom. I'm here to talk about the study Association of Resistance Exercise Independent of and Combined with Aerobic Exercise with the Incidence of Metabolic Syndrome, which will appear in the Mayo Clinic Proceedings. In this study, we examined the association of resistance exercise independent of and combined with aerobic exercise with the risk of developing metabolic syndrome. In the study, we included adults enrolled in the Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study who received comprehensive medical examinations at the Cooper Clinical Clinic in Dallas. The Aerobic Center Longitudinal Study is a cohort examining the association of clinical and lifestyle factors, including physical activity, with the development of chronic diseases and mortality. We included 7,418 individuals who received a comprehensive medical examination and in whom uh, physical activity was assessed using questionnaires. We found that 15% of the participants developed metabolic syndrome during a median follow-up of four years. 38% of the individuals participated in resistance exercise. Individuals with higher levels of resistance exercise were more likely to be younger, leaner and more aerobically active. They were also less likely to smoke and had more favorable lipid profiles compared with individuals not performing resistance exercise. We found that performing any resistance exercise was associated with a 17% lower risk of developing metabolic syndrome after adjusting for com potential confounders, including aerobic exercise. Meeting resistance exercise guidelines had a similar 70% lower risk after full adjustment. Furthermore, we found that resistance exercise for less than one hour per week and four days a week was associated with a 29 and 38 percent reduced risk of metabolic syndrome respectively. In additional analysis, we examined the risk of metabolic syndrome among individuals with the same total amount of weekly resistance exercise but at different frequencies. The joint analysis of frequency and the total amount of resistance exercise did not reveal any significant differences in the risk of developing metabolic syndrome between less, and fre less frequent and more frequent exercisers. Finally, we found that individuals meeting both recommended guidelines for resistance and aerobic exercise had a 25% lower risk of developing metabolic syndrome compared with individuals meeting neither guidelines. The results of the study suggest that participating in resistance exercise, independent of aerobic exercise, significantly decreases the risk of developing metabolic syndrome compared with no resistance exercise in a middle-aged relatively healthy population. However, higher volumes of resistance exercise did not provide further benefits, suggesting against the more is better philosophy. Further, further, the combined analysis of weekly frequency and the total amount of resistance exercise showed no effect of exercise frequency in the incidence of metabolic syndrome. Also, meeting both resistance and aerobic exercise guidelines is superior in preventing metabolic syndrome. The take-home message from this paper for the clinical practice is that resistance exercise combined with aerobic exercise should be encouraged in order to reduce the risk of developing metabolic syndrome. Currently, there are only a few studies examining the effects of resistance exercise and they showed inconsistent dose-response relationships. Therefore, future research should focus on the dose-response relationship between resistance exercise and different health outcomes. We hope you found this presentation from the content of Mayo Clinic Proceedings valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you will find access information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter.
More information about health care at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.